A lot of people don't even bother worrying at all about focus. If you're like me, you've probably styled it to match your hover state because it's the easiest thing to do, or worse yet, you better not be one of these people, you just turn it off completely. In this video, we'll look at why focus is important, but we're also going to look at um, how we can get some cool focus states like this. So you can see this is working really cool. We get this nice effect on our buttons. Uh, we can do this cool little thing that really grabs the attention and why is it important to grab the attention? And really importantly too, you've probably figured out how to turn the, out the default style off on everything but in Firefox you might not know how to get rid of the one on buttons this is not the same as on links where you can see I've, I've changed my focus state but it's still keeping that little weird thing on the text there so we're gonna see how we can do that and we're gonna be having a lot of fun with custom properties a whole bunch of other stuff let's jump right into it Before we jump into it, I want to look at what the default focus states are and why they're a little bit of a problem. So here we have the default focus state in Chrome, the one you're probably most familiar with, with this blue glowy thing that it does, where, you know, it's okay, but people often on buttons really get annoyed by that. Um, and of course, I'm actually focused on this over here, and you can barely see it. I just happen to have a background where it's super low contrast and happens to be blue, just a coincidence in this demo. Um, but it is possible that you literally can't see when something is focused. So now I am focused on that. You might barely be able to see it. Up here we have uh, Firefox's default focus state where you can see it puts a little dotted box around it instead. It is generally lower contrast. Um, and you can see on buttons, interestingly enough, it's inside the button and not around the button itself like it is on Chrome where you get the blue box on the outside. So I always find that interesting. Um, it does seem to take the current color. So here you can see it's actually the, the dotted box is using the yellow or here it is sticking with the black. So that does help with the contrast issue, but it is still, especially over here, I find uh, it can be really hard to see as well. And if we go on over to Edge, um, we can see that the default here is very similar to Firefox, but interestingly enough, it is on the outside of their box like it is on Chrome. And the colors aren't exactly the same as they were in Firefox, because on this one, it is black still where it was definitely orange over there. Now this is Edge. I don't know if that's gonna change when they update to Chromium. I'm on a new computer. I'm just setting everything up. Sorry also if a few things are a little bit different here. I'm trying to get my computer up and running like uh, the old one was. Um, but you can see what the differences are, but what we're really focused on right now is looking at how we can make them better because as you can see they're, they're really not perfect. So to fix this, what can we do? Well, let's go and we're gonna take a look at a couple examples here like I already said. Um, so I have a few of my example one, my example two, and for now I'm just going to focus over on Firefox. We don't have the same thing twice, clean things up a little bit. Um, so I'm going to do, um, one thing you'll often see is people doing a focus outline of none and oh my goodness that's terrible to do um, but if I focus on this you'd never know it because I'm actually focused on that but if I tab over all oh, in, in Firefox it's still showing up there. So this won't even remove it in every situation where you think it might be removing it. So uh, that is good to know, but I'd also say never, ever, ever do this. Um, so other ways we can do it. Well, I'd actually stick with outline and outline is super useful. There's a good reason why it is used as the default, except on our little buttons in uh, Firefox there, but that is a big exception to how most of the browsers are doing it. Um, but the reason outline is really useful, let's do like three pixels solid, and I'm gonna use my current uh, color primary here, um, just um, so that is a CSS custom property, if you're not familiar with them, where it's just gonna use this orange color or my yellow color over here. Um, so you can see that it makes this the box, instead of that blue glowy blocks that we we're used to in Chrome show up, uh, we can have it show up like that. And if I go over here, it's gonna be taking the yellow on because of how I've set everything up there. Now, the advantage with using outline is I can make this 10 pixels and it's never going to cause a problem because outlines don't actually affect the, the document flow. They're completely independent, just like box shadows are. And in that sense, it can be super, super useful uh, because you know you're not breaking your document flow and you can do these really like in your face focus states and maybe going, well, that's too much. And I, I think it is probably too much right now. And the reason that doing your focus not in the same way as your hover state, because I think we've all done things like uh, where we do like an A hover comma A focus. Uh, this is literally what I tell people to do all the time. This is what I've been telling people to do forever. Um, but you know what? The reason we don't want to do that is, let's say I do a hover and I just change my opacity to like a 0.7. 
Um, so if I'm hovering on that, you know, okay, cool. That that's working and I, it's working, you know, so it's working and yeah, I guess that's kind of cool. But the problem that's going to happen is if we do that from a focus state as well. So we come and do a focus. Um, when we do this with the mouse, I'm leading to where I'm going. So like, I know I'm here or if I bring my mouse over to here, then I, I know I'm here. My eye's already there, and then I can definitely see that it's an interactive element. But let's just say that I'm here and I tab on it. So now you can see my little focus ring is on it. But if I tab over, my eyes are still looking here, and I, I haven't seen a change happen yet. Well, actually, it's gone down to this, but it's so subtle that I didn't even see anything change. And then if I push tab again, I can sort of, I guess when I tab there, I can sort of see it a little shift, so my eyes will go over but it's not enough to really grab the attention. And since I don't know exactly where it's gonna go, I should do something that's really, really grabbing the attention. And I just wanna thank Zell for, he's had a whole bunch of recent articles on focus state. I'm gonna to link to those below there. What, if you don't know Zell Yu, uh, he has tons of amazing JavaScript content, but he's recently been doing a bunch of stuff on focus states and it's what's inspired me to make this video. Um, and I think it is a really important point to bring up where our focus states should be something that can actually grab a little bit of attention. So, uh, you know, maybe this is a little bit of overkill and you might be going, well, it looks terrible on my button. We're going to fix that at the end. Uh, at the very end, we're going to see how we can do as a very similar effect, but with round corners instead of the ugly box. But a nice cool thing you can also do with outline is our outline offset of say five pixels, where uh, if we have that, we keep the box around it as well. So it's not actually touching what we're going on. Now, again, I think that's a little bit of overkill, but uh, because we have this focus state and because we're using an outline that doesn't ruin the document flow, um, it's not like a border that can actually cause things to shift around, which can be really, really useful. Um, but again, maybe this would be two pixels or three pixels, but something that's enough to grab the attention as we tab through these things. So there is an idea um, on what you might want to do um, and why, why it's important to have it. Now next, the, what I want to look at is this in Firefox. And just to show you, it is working the same over here in Chrome. Uh, if we tab, tab, you can see that it's looking pretty much the same um, in my two browsers. But for my buttons, where we see here we're getting the blue box, and over here we're not getting the blue box, we're getting it on the inside, um, we could do something where we could try and do something to fix that. So let's say I had my button focus. And again, if I said outline none or an outline zero or anything like that, it's going to work here in Chrome, where when I tab onto that, nothing is showing up. That blue, the blue glow is now completely vanished. But over here, it has not changed. And that's because Mozilla is actually doing its own thing a little bit on this, which is called, uh, the, you have to use the, it's a pseudo element and it's using Moz, uh, which is a prefix here, and it's focus inner. And here we could do, uh, it's actually a border they're putting on it, so we'd have to do a border of zero. So I'm actually gonna do, um, let's just, just to show uh, background green, just to show when we do focus that it really jumps in. So if my border zero is on, you can see there's nothing there. But if I turn that off, when I click on, you can see that border is still showing up or we can see that border is still showing up right there. So uh, this Moz focus inner, if you do wanna turn that off, that's how you can do that. And it will have no effect in Chrome. Chrome just ignores it because it doesn't know what it is. So we're all fine and dandy on that. So there we go. I think if you had a big color shift like this on a button, and so that was your hover state, and it's a really big change, I think maybe you can get away with it there. It's it's just on these little subtle things because a lot of the time hover states are these little subtle effects, and you probably want a little bit more than a little simple effect because, again, you need to drag the eye with it. But let's just say we're not changing uh, the background to be green. We really are doing a very subtle hover effect, which I haven't set up here, but let's just pretend we have a subtle hover effect on those. Um, and you want to do something a little bit more on your buttons, but you don't want to use your outline because as we saw, the outline can look really, really bad. Whereas I think it's working okay here. It's just not working there. That looks kind of awkward. So you can can't really use outlines for this. It's one of the fallbacks of outlines is we do not have the ability to do round corners, but enter box shadow. Now we can achieve the exact same effect. Um, I'm sure you all know box shadows where we can, let's just do a normal box shadow of like five pixel offset, five pixel offset, a 10 pixel blur and an RGBA 
just like that. A nice subtle little box shadow. You can see it's coming and going on that. So now we have a little shadow appearing on there. Maybe we'll make it a bit stronger just to make it stand out a bit more. There we go. So a box shadow like that is fine, but instead of doing a 10 pixel um, blur on that, I'd actually do a zero pixel blur and a 10 pixel spread. And look at that. Now we have a 10 pixel spread. Oh, but that looks kind of weird. You're right. Let's do no blur, uh, no offsets in any direction. And then you just sort of get like the outline we were doing before. Of course, it's a different color, but that's cool. And you can see it's working there. And if I come back this way, it's working here. It's not going to ruin the document flow because box shadows, just like outline, do not have any effect on the flow. Now, the one thing with it is you can't really do an offset with it. Uh, so on here, I'm actually going to do, I'm going to put this on a few lines because we're going to want two box shadows. So my first box shadow is going to be a zero, zero, zero. We'll do a five pixel spread and just do a white background on it. But here, instead of putting a semicolon, I am going to put a comma because we want to have more than one box shadow. And on this, we can put our second box shadow, 0, 0, 0, 10 pixels. These do not have to be on different lines. Uh, they can be on one line just for clarity's sake. I like putting it on multiple lines so it's I don't have any weird run wrap, wrap text wrap or side scrolling for my demo here. Um, and now we should see, look at that. Isn't that cool? And then we can go over here. Oh, it's a little bit busted there. So let's go and fix that. Why not? Um, I'd use my color primary where I changed my CSS uh, custom property to be my yellow, but my background I just set like that. So I think what I'm going to do is actually change this to have, because I already have it, my color BG. And we're going to copy this color. And we're going to switch my background to be my color. Uh, var color bg um, this is custom properties are like the coolest thing ever you don't need two hyphens there um, custom properties are the coolest thing ever they just open up so many possibilities and make our lives so much easier because uh, in this i don't have to have like have two different classes i'm just changing an example to what these two variables are and then here what i can do is my var color bg because my color BG, I'm using it as my background there. Actually, it might be a darker gray. We'll find out in a second. Whoops, this should be BG. It might be my darker gray. It is, but we could play around with that a little bit and fix that. Uh, let's go and do that right away. Uh, so there we can tab onto there. You see that white color is coming in there. And if I tab onto that one, the blue color is coming in. It just gives it this cool little offset effect. I think it's a lot of fun. It's really useful. Again, you probably don't want to sink tons of time into doing your focus states like this. But if you do have a bit of time to do it, you probably don't want to sink a ton of time coming up with these crazy solutions for it. But it is something that is worth investing in on your site because people do use the keyboard to navigate and you want to make their lives as easy as possible. And I really hope you liked this video and learned a couple things along the way. If you want to know more about box shadows, I have a cool video that looks at a bunch of unconventional ways that you can use them. Thank you so much for my patrons for helping make all of this possible. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for your support. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.